What is shaken, Internet? This is Salt's bringing you the How to Lol for Dummies Roles Guide. In this guide, I will give a brief rundown of all the roles in a basic League of Legends game, explain the characteristics to look for in each champion for these roles, and give some priorities or basic strategies to begin with. So, to begin with, uh, there are five basic roles in each game, one for each champion on the five-man team. Let me be clear. There are no predefined rules, and almost any champion can play in almost any role. But you might be playing them suboptimally, and you will almost certainly face some animosity from your team if you pick a very strange champion for some roles. Don't be afraid to experiment, although you should almost always try out these strange choices with bots or normal games with friends first. Now for the five roles. The five roles are Solo Mid, Range DPS, or AD Carry sometimes called Marksman, Support, Solo Top, and Jungler. Let's start at Solo Mid. Mid lane will almost always be a 1v1, even in lower level games, so it's a good role to play once you're familiar with the game and want to try to play without any help. The mid lane is the shortest of all lanes, so even if you have to go back to buy items, you should be back in lane very quickly. Mid lane champions are normally bursty casters, aka magic wielders that can use their abilities to blow up enemies quickly. Mid lane is the shortest lane, so most mid champs don't need a lot of sustain or healing to stay in the lane for very long, because they can come back relatively quickly. Mid lane also is the most vulnerable to enemy ganks, because of the multiple entrances on both sides of the lane, but this works both ways. It's easier to be ganked in mid, but it's also easier to set up ganks against your enemy. A good mid will have a good way to farm, normally through an AoE or at least a ranged attack. Being in a solo lane, it's important to farm all the minions you can, which will net you the bonus EXP and gold for last hitting. However, a mid lane should be more uh, should more importantly have a reliable way to harass the enemy champion. This can be through also through the AoE, but more often is through some kind of piercing move that can go through minions. The reason harassing the enemy is important in mid is because you want the enemy to be lower health than you. This is for both offensive and defensive ganks. If the enemy is low health, uh, then your jungler will easily be able to come in and clean up. Also, if the enemy jungler shows up for a gank, and they're low health, at best, you can kill them when they move in. And at worst, they will be cautious to engage and you can get away, avoiding that 2v1 situation. A final trait you want in mid is some CC, or crowd control. Having CC will immensely increase your chance of killing the enemy when your jungler shows up. If you can stun the enemy, the jungler will move in and use their slow or stun, whatever they have, to remove any chance of escape. Having CC can also be defensive, stopping the enemy jungler when they move in for a kill. So, for priorities in mid, harassing the enemy champion is first and foremost. Keeping them low is the best strategy, because that keeps you safer and opens up a kill on your team. You should be constantly attacking and using abilities to hit the other champion. Secondly, you need to keep farming minions. A solo lane needs to take advantage of that bonus, EXP, and you won't have a lane partner that can pick up last hits that you miss. Don't let them slip if you can avoid it. Play defensive if the enemy team has a jungler. Use your wards and keep an eye out on the minimap for any indications where they are. If there's no enemy jungler, you know they are far, or you know that you they are far away, you can play more aggressively and focus more on harassing the enemy champion. Now, I give the Pro Man's Choice award to Ari in mid. She has great harass with her orb and fairy fire, and her charm is very good CC. Her ult gives her amazing mobility, which can be used offensively and defensively to get us out of some of the worst situations. The Poor Man's Choice award goes to Annie. Her long range auto attacks and fire cone let her farm well and harass from a distance, and her stun can easily lead to a kill with some jungler assistance. Once she hits 6, she can really pop some damage and wreck some face. All at only 450 IP. Moving down the map, let's talk about ADC now. The ranged DPS equivalent of the team, the ADC, or Marksman as Riot likes to call them, is generally a fragile glass cannon that deals massive damage from a distance, normally in the form of auto attacks rather than abilities. AD carries are generally item dependent champions, meaning that they scale well with good items and do a lot of damage later in the game, a lot more damage later in the game. Their characteristics vary widely, but generally they have very strong damaging moves and either a mobility boost or dash or a small CC-ish thing. 
Now, good AD carries are ones that can farm well, as this is the number one priority for this role. Getting last hits is very important to keep your levels high and keep that gold flowing in, as this is the one thing AD carries need more than anyone else on the team. Gold. A second priority is to kill enemy champs. I say kill and not harass. Most of the time your efforts should be spent killing minions, but when your lane partner is able to do some damage to the enemy champions, you need to be prepared to finish them off. Harass is mostly left for your lane partner, but you can help if possible. You just need to stay safe, because if you die, your lane partner won't be able to hold them off by themselves. You should be staying behind your minions and farm, farm, farm. Did I say farm? And farm. And farm. <laughs> then jump on them if your partner can get them low enough to finish them off. So, for AD carry priorities, farm is first and foremost, with getting kills being second. Remember that killing a champion gets about 300 to 400 gold on average, whereas killing about 30 minions gives you the same. Killing minions is much more reliable, so focus on that. Staying alive so you can get gold and EXP is paramount during the laning phase. Okay, the Pro Man's Choice Award goes to Ezreal, sadly enough. Ezreal is a high damage dealer that can farm pretty easily, and, as well as harass enemies very effectively. His mobility allows him to escape from sticky situations as well, and his global ult can be used for all kinds of different things. The Poor Man's Choice Award here goes to Ash. At 450 IP, she is a solid choice that even sees play in championship matches. Her kiting ability is great unless enemies have dashes, and Volley helps farm and harass at the same time. Again, a global ult that can completely turn around games is the cherry on the top. Now, in the same lane as the AD carry is the support role. The support may sound boring, but supports can actually be some of the most aggressive champions in the game. The general support is someone who is damaging the enemy champions and keeping them away from both his lane partner and the friendly minions. Keeping them away from minions starves them of the EXP and gold, and keeping your partner alive will make sure that they can farm safely and get bonus gold and EXP. Supports really have these two jobs. One, to harass the enemy, or at least keep them away from their partner, and two, to keep their partner alive. Supports can do this from all sorts of ideas. They have shield moves, healing moves, CC to keep enemies in place, or even long distance poke to keep them back. A lot of champions can be played as supports through various means, and with various items that can potentially help out. One thing a support should not do is last hit minions, unless your lane partner can't get them or is back at the base. Stealing last hits from your partner is bad, as they need the items to do the damage. Support champions generally don't do a ton of damage, at least early in the game, as they won't be getting gold, but they can poke the enemy over and over and over. Mana dependent champions are tougher to support with because you have less opportunities to miss. Here's looking at you, Blitzcrank. One last thing about support. In lower level games, there might be a jungler on the enemy team, but not yours. This normally results in a 2v1 situation, with two being on your team, in the top lane. Uh, because of that, you'll need a second support style champion to play in top lane against the enemy. Now, even if both of the champs on your team take last hits evenly, the real point of this support championish thing is to try to keep the single enemy champ in that lane far away from the minions. You want to keep them away from gaining EXP, and that is very important to keeping their levels relatively even with yours, and harassing them out of the lane completely is the best strategy. The longer you go in a 2v1 situation without getting any kills or making them go back to base, the more likely it is that they'll outlevel you and be very hard to kill. So you gotta be extra aggressive early. But watch out for those jungler ganks. The Pro Man's Choice for Award for supports is really kinda tough, but I would say Leona takes the cake here. She can harass very effectively once she gets her level 2 combo Zenith Blade stun, and her basic tankiness makes her very sturdy. She doesn't need to farm to be tanky, luckily, and she can protect her partner very effectively with two and a half stuns. I say that because Zenith Blade roots people for a fraction of a second. Um, the poor man's choice here probably goes to Soraka. She can harass pretty well and keep her partner alive with some nice heals, but she can be a bit squishy herself. Still, she has some tricks up her sleeve, and her short silence shouldn't be underestimated. A global heal is just the icing on the cake for this 450 IP champion. Now let's jump up to top lane next. 
Top lane is a lane for bruisers mostly, people who can shrug off a little damage and still dish it out. It's a bit for the loners as it's very isolated from the rest of the team. Often you'll spend long stretches without leaving lane until a jungler jumps in. Top champs are really looking for longevity or sustain as they need to stay in lane longer. They play similarly, similarly to mid because of the solo nature, but it's a noticeably longer run back to your tower if you have to return to heal or buy items. That longer run makes you lose more EXP and more gold, so you want to be able to stay in lane as long as possible. Additionally, you're still in a solo lane, so farming is your number one priority. The main difference from mid is your priority of harassing enemy champions. This is very dependent on who you're up against, though. But farming minions should be much higher priority than doing damage to your enemy, which makes you more like the AD carry roll than the mid roll. This is because of what I just said. Top lane champions are generally champs that have sustain, heals, shields, or lifesteal to mitigate that damage. Because of that, doing a little damage to the enemy champion probably won't do anything to help you out in the long run. Now, farming is absolutely what top champs need to do. They need to avoid taking any damage to their tower, because without the safety of their tower, they're even more vulnerable to ganks than they were before. To avoid that damage, they need to stay in lane and sustain themselves. This means avoiding harass from the enemy champions and healing or shielding themselves from any un unavoidable damage. If you're in a 2v1 situation on the solo side, hope that the enemy hasn't watched this guide. <laughs> Farm only what you can do safely, as staying alive is even more important in a 2v1 lane. If you die in this case, even once, or have to go back to your uh, base, even once, it's highly likely that they can take advantage and push your tower or even destroy it. What you're trying to do in this situation is farm minions and level up fast, as they stay in lane for a 2v1, as if they stay in lane for a 2v1 for a long time, you'll outlevel them pretty quickly. After you're a few levels higher than them, you should be able to hold your own pretty easily, and possibly even turn it around, especially when your jungler comes in. Now, the pro man's choice for a top champ is a bit tricky, but I think it would go to Shen. With great sustain, harass, and a shield for good measure, Shen can farm top all day and take plenty of hits in return. His global ult lets him continue farming top and then jump to the fight when needed, getting that extra time for extra gold and EXP. He's even fine in a 2v1 scenario with all of these extra mechanics. Now the poor man's choice would probably go to Kale. Kale costs about, uh, she costs 450 IP and can be a great top champion. She can farm safely if needed with her range increase. Uh, in a 2v1 situation you can use that a little more. And has plenty of sustain in the form of her heal. She can even get away from bad ganks and help out with her own team's ganks with her move speed buff and slow not to mention her invincibility ult. Now, the final role we're going to discuss is jungle. Now, I'd suggest you go watch my jungling guide if you want to know a lot more about jungling, but we'll cover it briefly here as well. Jungling is like the sneaky guy on the team that plays very differently than the people in lane, as the enemy never knows where you are. Just because you're sneaky doesn't automatically make you an assassin, as junglers will still have to take hits from monsters in the jungle while leveling up, and can be quite tanky. Junglers have two main qualities that they need to do so effectively. First is to sustain, similar to top. The difference is that top just had to make sure that they could stay in lane for long periods of time. You as a jungler need to make sure that you can stay in the jungle and take hits from monsters for long periods of time. Most junglers have uh, some built-in heal or lifesteal mechanics to help with this, but not all of them. Be aware of your health when jungling at all times. Uh, the next quality is some good CC or mobility. This is for when you venture out of the jungle to gank enemies, as you'll need mo uh, mobility to catch them and CC to ensure that your teammates can jump on them as well. If both you and your teammates have CC, then all the better. Now lots of champions can jungle, if not all champions, but only a few do it very well. Uh, my only one piece of my one piece of major advice for junglers is to think of ganks as giving you an advantage not getting a kill. If you gank a lane but don't get a kill, the fact you did damage to the enemy and potentially made them waste a summoner spell or healing potions is generally good enough. This will give your teammates in that lane an advantage, period. I won't go into much more detail on jungling since I have a separate guide for it, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the awards. The Pro Man's Choice Award goes to Lee Sen. Lee's ridiculous amount of mobility and variety of moves make him an efficient jungler and a very good ganker. 
Once he gets his, gets his ult, he's even scarier, but he does have a very high skill cap to play effectively. Now the poor man's choice goes to Nunu, a very safe jungler with great sustain and even some good CC for ganks. Nunu is not only a cheap jungler at 450 IP, but also a decent one that can do pretty much everything a jungler needs to do relatively well. And that covers all five roles in League of Legends, in a normal League of Legends game. On Summoner's Rift, that is. Hopefully this has given you some insight into the different types of gameplay, what is expected from each role, and perhaps which role you want to try out. Feel free to leave any questions you might have in the comments below, and I will try my best to answer them. Hopefully you've enjoyed this quick and easy guide for dummies. Please like, favorite, share, subscribe, all that jazz, and as always, you keep it salty, Internet.